Okay. All right. So you want the bottom line one before we start, right? You just want the bottom line. Skip, Rabbi, just give me the bottom line. Okay. The, the objective today is, I'll tell you the bottom line, but really the objective today is to try and understand the issue and why it is not so, it's, it's actually quite gray, the entire issue halachically. Um, the, uh, we are fortunate living in Toronto to have the most lenient of the Gedole HaPoskim of our generation being, you know, living in our community. Rev. Shlomo Miller Shlita is the most makel in this area of halacha, probably more than any other North American posig. More so than the OU, COR on this particular halacha is the most lenient. We're going to see why Rev. Miller has a tshuva uh, that, uh, that was issued by the COR explaining his position. Part of it has to do with the fact that he is a student uh, Talmud of Rav Moshe, and uh, as such, he felt, he felt uh, I guess, a need to uh, defend Rav Moshe's position and to clarify it and explain it. Rav Moshe wrote a tshuva an, uh, uh, over 50 years ago, probably about 60, maybe, well, if it's in the 50s, probably close to, yeah, about over 60 years ago, on the issue of blended whiskey that has wine additives. It's not exactly the same Shila that we have tonight uh, because we have the issue of sherry casks, which is a slightly different mitzias. But Rav Moshe's uh, conclusion was to be lenient. And he said, a bal nefesh should be machmir. Uh, a, a bal nefesh, how would you translate a bal nefesh? Anyone? What would you, what would you translate a no, bal nefesh? A non-Kiddish club member, right? A bal nefesh. What would you do? A person yeah, who's concerned time. more about yeah, his values, like, values his neshama or something, maybe, or is more like is more is more uh, st uh, stringent, perhaps, in his observance, should be machmer. Rav Moshe himself wrote in the tshuva that if someone were to offer me uh, one of the the whiskies that I've been discussing, a blended whiskey that has wine additives added. Would, would offer it to me for a l'chaim in a public venue, I would not turn him down. I would drink it because I wouldn't want to insult him. And since there's reason in halacha to be lenient, you can be lenient. So therefore, that was his, that was his position that he took. You, there's definitely room to be lenient, but a bal nefesh should be machmer. Now, the argument that we're going to see is that there's across the board. So, what I wanted to say, bottom line is, COR policy is the most lenient of all kashrus agencies that I know of in all of North America, and therefore we allow uh, uh, scotch that is aged in sherry casks, no questions asked. Okay? The OU. The OU is, is much more nuanced. Rav Belsky was much more machmir with sherry casks than the COR. Uh, today, though? Even today, yeah. yeah. In Israel? They don't allow it. I don't know what the policy is in uh -huh. Israel. Um, about a year ago, Rabbi Black uh, was, we was, was talking with me about this whole issue, and he, he had showed me this new safer, uh, Wine, Whiskey, and Halacha by Rav Shraga Kallis, um, which actually goes through the issues and also has a listing in the back, which I think you'll find fascinating, of every single single malt or blended whiskey that has issues. And he writes whether it's an issue, whether it's permissible, permissible but the scrupulous should be stringent or forbidden because it's exclusively sherry casks. He takes a more stringent view than Harav Miller. Is he out of Lakewood? Um, I, I'm not sure you'll have to take a look. I'm going to pass this around. Here, Alan, why don't you take There's this? There's another publication that uh, was put out by uh, a couple of rabbis in Lakewood, uh, and this doesn't look like it, which Half the book was basically around how, how well Scotch whiskey is made. Okay, well, we're going to talk about, we're going to see in a tshuva from, from Diane Weiss, Zatzal, exactly how Scotch is made, because that's really the issue. Um, so, therefore, uh, by the way, I now call Rabbi Black Johnny Walker, because uh -huh. now he's Johnny Walker Black. But anyway, that's a. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. Um, so I, I thank him for that, for that safer. Let's take a look at the sources and see what the issues are. So source number one, we're going to look at the tour. We're going to try and simplify the sources as much as possible. He writes, the tour writes that in Simon 
Kufla Medalit in Yoridea, that Viyayin Nesech, Shenis Arev Bemayim Oser Beno Saintam. The Gemara says this that if you have wine that is mixed with water, as long as you can detect the flavor of the wine, that whole beverage is usr. Here we're talking about yayin nesech, which is forbidden bahana. It's actual wine that's used in the libation of idolatry. Our Gentile wine today is called stam yenam, which is rabbinically usr because it's akin to wine used for idolatrous libation. Now yesh meforshim dahainu bishishim, kemo bishar isurim. Now, some explain that when the Gemara says that it's Usr Beno Saint Tom, that as long as it's giving off a flavor, it is Usr, means that you would need to have 60 times the water than the wine in order for the wine to be bottled, just like all other Isurim, which are detectable with flavor. Right? However, the Harai Vid Kasav, and this, this is quoted in Tosis in um, Avodazara Daf Ayin Gimel, Kaven Shinis Arev Bemayim. The Ravid says that no, if you have so much water in the wine, it doesn't have to be 60 times the wine, it just has to be more than the normal amount is used to dilute wine. In the times of the Gemara, the Gemara says that properly diluted wine, the wine was concentrated much more so than our wine today, and it wasn't pleasant to drink. It was more like a strong sherry. So you would add three parts water to one part wine to be able to get a beverage, which the Gemara calls yayin mazug, diluted wine. If you add more water than that, so that it's not, uh, it doesn't have, doesn't have the right proportion of dilution, so then the wine is bottled, even though you can still detect the flavor of the wine. Why is that? It's because the flavor of the wine no longer makes that beverage taste good, but it's rather a bad tasting beverage. And so what we do is, is that we resort to the din of, see, what's the whole reason that if you can detect the flavor of an usser substance, uh, then it becomes usser? Normally the Torah says that something is bottle barov. All you need is a majority of the f permitted substance to nullify the forbidden substance. You just need 1.1 1 .1 against 1, and then the thing is bottled. Where do we get the 60 to 1? We have a principle in Chazal called Tam Ki'ikr, that when you can detect the flavor, it's as if the substance is clearly visible in front of you. It's not bottle. But that's only when the Tam is a Tam Mishubach, if it's a good flavor. If the flavor is bad, it contributes a bad flavor. If the forbidden substance contributes a bad flavor to the a larger mixture, then even if the flavor is still detectable, it doesn't prohibit the larger mixture. <clears throat> That's the principle behind, oh, we're not going to get into the whole thing tonight, what, but no saying Tom Lifgam. If it gives a bad flavor, it's considered to be bottle as long as you have a majority of the water to the wine. Umutter afilu bishtia. Hilkach im yesh b'mayim vav chalakim in hayayim mutter afilu bishtia v'chein pirushri. And therefore, Tosis's conclusion is, now the Gemara over there is talking about the following scenario. It's not even talking about Yayin Nesach in that Gemara. It's talking about a person has two measures of diluted wine. So you've got one cup of wine, which is chulin, normal, drinkable wine that's already been diluted three parts to one. You've got another cup of wine, which is truma, also three parts water to one. They accidentally get mixed together. The Gemara says that even a non kohen is allowed to drink that mixture because you view the chulin as if it's non-existent and the six part, parts water are considered to be a higher proportion or percentage to uh, be mevatel, the truma wine, and therefore it's all permissible. At least that's the way that Tosus views that Gemara. And it's a very unusual way, it's a very creative way of looking of that whole scenario. But based on that, if you have six parts water to one part forbidden wine, that beverage now is permitted, even though you can clearly taste the flavor of the wine. That's where we get the six to one ratio 
when we're dealing with diluted wine. But it's wine and water. If, however, you have wine and wine, so let's say you have um, uh, for, for, forbidden wine that gets mixed in with permitted wine, there's no dilution there, there's no pigima, there's no tainting of the original forbidden wine because wine and wine is not going to taint the original wine, which water dilution does. And therefore, halachically, it would still be prohibited unless you have 60 to 1 ratio. Okay, that's the deal. That's the deal. So that's scenario, that's halacha number one that's important to you, for you to know, that uh, we paskin that a 6 to 1 ratio of water, and we'll see other, other liquids other than wine. So anything else that is that creates a negative flavor when it's added to wine in a certain proportion, all you need is a 6 to 1 ratio. First fact, okay? Second fact, let's look at a portion from Shulchan Aruch a few chapters later. Hilchos yayin nesach simen kuf lamed zayin. Seif echad. Okay, the, the Shulchan Aruch writes, Kol hakelem ha'asur machmas yayin shal oved kochavim. So you have a vessel that was used for Yayin Nesech, okay? And, or even Stam Yena, because Yayin Shalove Kochavim. If a Jew puts in his own beverage into that container before that container has been kashered, so then, Asr Bishtia Umutr Bahana, you're not allowed to drink the kosher wine, it becomes Asr but you're allowed to benefit from it. And that's true even if the barrel is dry, as long as 12 months have not elapsed, because the flavor of the wine in the barrel remains for a long time. And so therefore there's an assumption that there's been seepage of the barrel walls into the kosher wine, which is going to prohibit the, the, the kosher wine. Okay. Later in that same uh, simon, in Sif Dalid, the Shulchan Aruch writes, Kalim ha'asurin machmas yayin shal ove kochavim, mutar litain l'socham, bein mayim, bein sheichar, bein sha'ar mashkin. He says, but that's only when we talk about storing wine in Gentile casks. What happens if I take a wine cask from a Gentile uh, 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 supplier, and I want to put other beverages in there, I want to put water in there, I want to put beer in there. I want to put other beverages. Sha'ar mashkim is other beverages. He says, even l'chatchila, that's perfectly fine. You can store whatever beverage you like in the wine casks of a non-Jew. Uvilvad sheyadiach batchila lichluche hayayin sha'al penei hakelim. Provide that, all, that you rinse it off, you rinse off the inside of the barrel from any residue of actual wine on the surface of the inside of the barrel. Once you've rinsed out the barrel, you don't worry about seepage. Why? He says, because the, any kind of seepage is going to be pogain, is going to taint the flavor of the water, is going to taint the flavor of whatever beverage you put in. It's going to be no St. Tom Lifgam. It's going to give a negative flavor. OK, sounding pretty good so far, right? So you put scotch in sherry casks. The word sherry, by the way, is another just fancy word for wine. So it's a wine cask. They usually would get, they import them from Spain. Nowadays, the whole process of, of sherry casks, that was originally done for convenience, that in Scotland they would import sherry casks because they were available and they were inexpensive. Today, after discovering for, uh, for decades that actually the sherry seepage into scotch enhances the scotch. And now that sherry casks are now in high demand, they're using other casks. And some higher end scotches are actually creating their own sherry casks. In other words, they'll buy oak casks that have never been used before. And they will use a process of either smoking or cooking sherry or wine into the casks, lechatchila, as part of the manufacturing process of the scotch. Let's keep that in mind, that life has changed a lot since Rav Moshe originally wrote his tshuva. When sherry casks, first of all, Rav Moshe was not talking about sherry casks, but we're going to see Rav Weiss is talking about sherry casks. We'll see that in a moment. 
Now, so let's take a look at the taz. And if you can even salt food, like you know, herring or whatever you want, you can even use salting, which is even a stronger uh, drawer out of the seepage that's inside the, uh, the barrels, you can even salt things in there. Take a look at the taz. Uh, on that, you can put in water or beer or any other beverage you want. Nearly pashut, afilu im hamashkim nishtahim sham me es mutter. He says that's true even if you want to store the, the beverage, the kosher beverage in there for extended periods of time, for more than 24 hours, even though this is invariably going to be absorption of the, of the um, substance that was previously in the walls of the barrel. Because as the tour wrote, the wine provides a negative flavor. The wine that seeps in provides a negative flavor. Now you might ask a question. I will grant you that it's no St. Tom Lifgam. But Simi, you learned the Yoridea, right? And you know that, uh, Rabbi Simi, I should say, and you know that uh, just because you have a pot that has a substance that is no St. Tom Lifgam, for let's, so let's say, for example, it hasn't been used in 24 hours. You can't take a fleshach a pot and cook a cream of mushroom soup in it just because it hasn't been used in 24 hours and it's no St. Tom Lifgam. It's only Bidievit that we would say it's kosher, right, man? So what rights, the Taz asks a very legitimate question. It's one thing to say bidieved, post facto, that if you stored things in there, the, the water is still kosher. But what gives you the right lechatchila to store th- water in there just because it's no St. Tom Lifgam? His answer is shiny hacha denivla bitsoni. Because everything has, there's been no cooking at all involved in the process of getting the wine in the walls of the barrel. It's only been through absorption of cold, through a cold temperature absorption, and therefore there's more reason to be lenient. Because by cold, normally there is no bleas by by. Right, although we have this concept of kivisha, which means that if you store something in there for 24 hours or longer, it does also, it absorbs like bishel. Right. But the Taz wants to argue that in this scenario, since it was nivla through kvisha, you can be megal. The afal gav de kasafti leel simen kuf heis if alad b'shem dark emosha dim shobo yai nesach me eisleis aser laseis laoto kli afilu tzonin me eisleis. Efsher deihu kaamar al yai nesach mamish the iser veheter my the sorry the iser veheter myri b'stam yena. He says, and even though previously we wrote that that lechatchila it's aser when you're dealing with a barrel of yai nesach. Here it's possible that we're talking about only the rabbinic pro- prohibitedly, rabbinically prohibited wine of Stam Yenam, and that's why there's, since it's only rabbinic prohibition, only absorbed through cold absorption, therefore there's more reason to be lenient. I skipped a lot of text in between, but the Taz's bottom line is, is that the whole thing is like a gzera l'gzera. Because the whole reason why we aser stam yenam is only a gzera lest you come to uh, idolatrous wine. And the whole, whole reason that we os, that we aser l'chatchila, no sein, something that's no saint tam l'fgam, is lest you use something that is no saint tam l'shvach. And therefore it's a gzera l'gzera, and therefore we're going to be totally lenient. That even lechatchila, you can store water in other non-wine beverages in wine casks, even wine casks from non-kosher wine, as long as it's stam yenam and not really yayin nesach. Okay, so this is sounding really good. Okay, now we're like it's like it keeps getting better. Okay, so now let's go to the Magen Avram in Simin Tuf Nun Aleph. Now we're jumping to a whole different section of Shulchan Aruch. Now we're getting into Hilchos Pesach where the whole discussion is how you kosher kalim for Pesach. And the Mogin Avram writes as follows. If you have a barrel that was used for storing shechar, used for storing beer made out of chametz, are you allowed to use that barrel for storage of things that you'd like to keep kosher le Pesach? That's the whole discussion, okay? So, im nasnu bo yayin odvash kodem Pesach, 
Mutter lishtos mimenu bepesach, uvilvad shiaru oso kodem pesach lechavishel pesach. So he talks about the following scenario. Let's say you had wine or honey that was being stored in a barrel that had previously been used to store beer, chametz beer. Okay? So he says, is that wine, is that honey kosher le Pesach still? He says, it is, but what you need to do is pour it out of its current container into a new kosher le Pesach container before Pesach, and the beverage will, will then be usable on Pesach. He says, Vigabiyayin, Afilu Haya Hakli Ben Yomoshari, the Sheikhar Biyayin no Saint Tam Lifgamhu. And that's true even if you stored wine in a beer cask and the beer had just been in there within the less than 24 hours. Because as we know, anytime you mix beer with wine, it's no Saint Tam Lifgam. It's, this is the opposite scenario where you have seepage of beer into the wine. But either way, says the Magin Avram, it's no St. Tom Lefgam. It has a negative flavor, not a positive flavor. Now, he says, he says, but that's only true if it's wine. If it's honey or some other beverage and the beer may have seeped into it, you have to make sure that the cask is an Eno Ben Yomo has not been used in 24 hours so that any seepage that comes out will be no St. Tom Lifgam. But then he writes, Umashma mitruma sadeshen sham, or umashma b'torah sabais, I'm not sure, I think maybe it's truma sadeshen, but he writes, Shechavis shel yayin saraf, afal pi she'ena ben yomo asr hakol, de'einenu ro'o sheno St. Tom lishvachu, uchemo shekosov b'yoradea simen kuf la medzayin sof sif alef legabe yayin ayin sham, Etc. He says, however, yayin saraf, if it was a barrel that was used to store whiskey, that's what yayin saraf means, okay? Yayin saraf is the Talmudic term for whiskey or spirits. If it was a barrel not, not had been storing beer, but had been storing chametz whiskey, then even though we learned that beverages that are stored in a wine cask um, require a, a, acquire a tainted flavor from the wine that seeps out, but with whiskey, that is not the case. Whiskey mixed with wine, there is a, an improvement of flavor. So if whiskey is introduced into kosher le Pesach wine, if you store wine in a, in a kosher le Pesach wine is stored in a whiskey cask, so then that's problematic. You can't use that wine on Pesach. This is the first time that we're seeing a special category called yayin saraf, whiskey. Here, the Magin Avram says that whiskey and wine is not the same thing as water and wine is not the same thing as beer and wine. Whiskey and wine is a problem because he says, einenu rose, we see, our eyes demonstrate. In other words, our experience tells us that when you mix wine and whiskey, there's an improvement of flavor not a diminution of flavor. Okay? Uh-oh. Now we're starting to get in trouble. Okay? So, we've, up until now it was smooth sailing. The Mug and Avram just threw a wrench into it. Really? Because that's for Pesach he's talking about. He's talking about Pesach, but his whole premise should apply to other issues as well. Because remember, what he's talking about is kosher le Pesach wine that is being stored in a whiskey cask apply that to kosher whiskey that is being stored in stam yenam casks, in sherry casks. The idea is still the same, that when you combine wine with whiskey, you get an improved flavor, not a detrimental flavor, not, 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 a, not a pogum flavor. Okay, let's put that on hold and let's see where we go with this. Number six. Shilas Achuvas no to be Yehuda. Now we go fast forward to the 18th century to Yecheskel Landau. We're not going to see the whole Chuva, just a few lines. Chuva lichvod ahuvi yedidi vachavivi harav gadol hamufla b'torah v'yira musmachu bal harak vod marino harav aharon natre rachmano parke that uh, one of his colleagues named harav aharon kibalti mechtava. 
got your letter. Your question was as follows. They take casks that were used to manufacture yayin saraf made from wine. What do you think he's talking about? Brandy. Brandy or cognac which cognac is a form of brandy. It comes from the cognac region, but it's all brandy. So they manufacture brandy in wooden casks, wooden barrels, and they empty out the cask, and within 24 hours, you've got Jews using those very same casks for manufacturing whiskey, which is basically spirits made out of grain instead of made out of wine. Okay, that's the Shaila. Is this okay or is this not okay? That's the question. He says, your contention was that you couldn't find anywhere the, where the Mogin Avram finds any problem with Yayin Saraf, with whiskey, as being some, any different from any other beverage. And he says, Ani Tama Alav. I'm amazed at how you can make such a statement. The Magen Avram doesn't mention it once, he mentions it twice, that whiskey is different from all other beverages in this respect. Which we just read above in source number five. Not only does the Magen Avram say that whiskey has a, dis- a difference in the fact that it has a sharp flavor, but he says it's different from all other sharp flavored beverages. Because whiskey is different from all other sharp flavored beverages in that it converts the wine that is absorbed into it or in, in his case, it takes the, the, um, the absorbed whiskey, seeps out into wine, and it actually improves its flavor, not detracts from its flavor. The Gaimein Lilmod, Heter Mimashim Avor, Biorodea, Simen Kufla, Medzayin, Siftalit, Shekelem Hasur, Machmas Yain, Shalnachrim, Mutu, Litain, Lasochem, Ben Mayim, Ben Shechar, Ben Sharmashkim, Ayin Sham. So, what are you going to argue, my friend, Rabbi Aaron? You're going to argue, well, the Shulchan Aruch Paskins, that if you have sherry casks, from Stam Yenam, you can put any beverage in store, any beverage, even Lechatchila, and there's no qualification in that place in the Shulchan Aruch. He says, it's clear over there that it's only because the wine uh, uh, makes the flavor worse. It's pogame the flavor when it seeps out. But, and maybe you'll argue that, well, the Shulchan Aruch even permits you to salt things. You can take uh, that same sherry cask and keep salt your herring in that has- cask. So if, if, if vinegar and brine is going to draw out the flavor so much and it's still considered to be okay, then surely sharp whiskey should also be okay. But then the note of Yehuda says, okay, I will concede you that point. In other words, based on what the Shulchan Aruch writes, and there's no differentiation between uh, herring brine and vinegar and water and beer, so apparently even whiskey would be okay, I will concede you that point. But there, it's talking about barrels that had absorbed wine. Here, we're talking about barrels which had absorbed brandy. And that's much more powerful, and therefore will have a positive flavor seeping out instead of a negative flavor that seeps out from wine. So the conclusion of the No de Yehuda is that this is a prohibited practice, what, he's, what has been described but only because the brandy is absorbed into the walls of the vessel. But if it's only wine that's absorbed into the walls of the vessel, he holds not like the Magen Avram, and he wants to argue that the Magen Avram perhaps is only being machmir in a situation where whiskey is seeping out of the walls into wine. 
That's a problem because a very sharp beverage of, uh, with a high alcohol content like whiskey will seep out and improve the flavor of the beverage. But if you have wine, which has a lower alcohol content, it's not as sharp, if it seeps that into whiskey, that's not going to be a problem. So here also we have a source to be more lenient, okay? So we're going back and forth. Now let's take a look at a tshuva from Dayan Weiss, which was written in Tufshin Tesvav, Tufshin Tezayin, just shortly after Rav Moshe's tshuva came out to be permissive about um, blended whiskey that is blended with glycerin and with wine products as well to sort of smooth the flavor of the, of the blended whiskey. And the reason why we're not going to take a look at Rav Moshe's tshuva tonight, one number one, is quite lengthy. And number two, you'll get a tamtsit of Rav Moshe's tshuva when we look at Rav Miller's tshuva. Okay? Time permitting. But let's take a look. And the reason why I find Diane Weiss's tshuva so fascinating is because he was a Diane in Manchester. And what happened was is that <coughs> he received, he spent the last several years of his life as a Diane for the Badats in Yerushalayim, but before then, he was many years a dying in Manchester. He was asked this question. He gets this tshuva from Rav Moshe, which, is, which says that, you know, American whiskey is, is, is okay, but what about Scotch whiskey, which is what our, uh, us Brits are drinking? This is long before a single malt scotch was in such high demand, remember. You know, back in the day, when you wanted to order whiskey, you got Canadian Club, which so you got the, the Canadian whiskey, What's the, U, the United States whiskey? You got bourbon, you got other kinds of things. You know, Southern Comfort was probably what Rav Moshe was most probably referring to, which has wine blended into it, okay? And other kinds of, of uh, what we would call domestic whiskeys. But then, you know, you get the high-end scotches, and a whole new industry was created in the 1970s, long after both Rav Moshe and Diane Weiss wrote their tshuvas, okay? What? The Indian succotash. The Indian scotch. 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 Yeah, he's not talking about scotch. The Indian scotch whiskey. That's also. Okay. No, he's talking about the Indian scotch whiskey. Mechshash yayin nesa. You're right. Drink scotch whiskey all night long. There's a line in a song like that. Anyway. Tshuva de la hala nitfisa biyagil Torah shnas tafshin tesayin. This was a tshuva that was printed in a journal called Yagil Torah in tafshin tesayin, which is in the 50s, right? 1956. 56, thank you. Okay. Is that your birthday? I'm sorry? It's not your birthday, is it? No, it's just I'm... You, you made the calculation. Okay, okay. I'm just kidding. Okay. Al davar asher nishalti lahabia chavos daiti Ha'inyan binogeya lamashke yayin saraf hanikra scotch whiskey, shall you know again ba me oilam af yureyam lishtosa. He says, listen, the minog in the UK, even among God fearing Jews, has always been to drink scotch whiskey. And now all of a sudden they're raising this shaila because of Rav Moshe's tshuva that maybe a bal nefesh should be machmir and all these other things. Ucha'es nola chiesh bezech shash taruvis tamyena mahudino. Now there's a fear. It may be, there may be some admixture of wine, non-kosher wine. What's the halacha? The Ezra Sashem Yom Gimel Rosh Chodesh Nisan Tafshin Tezayin Lepo Manchester. He says the, the tshuva is as follows. Tshuva. Bahadi yuni baze matzasi daasi liadi mashma kovtse hapardes. He says, I was able to get my hands on a journal called hapardes. Veraisi shikvar danu baze rabbonim hagdoilim ba'artzot habrit. And I see that the great poskim in, in America have already uh, adjudicated or discussed this matter. He's referring to Rav Moshe. The Sham Herich Bazer Rav Godel Echad Levarer Shiesh Bichte Lesser Bishtia Mita Amim De La Halan. And one Rav wrote that there's good reason to prohibit, unlike Rav Moshe, another Rav, I'm not sure who he's referring to. We'd have to go back to the Choveret of Hapardes to see. But he says that there's reasons to prohibit for the following reasons. Ki amad ala chakira udrisha ba'ofen ta'asiyat kol minei mashke. He went and investigated how, how whiskey is manufactured. Ve, okay, v'nodalo shi'ayin saraf mazuk hanikro blended whiskey, v'chol minei liquor uchedoime, nasim al yedei taruva shal alcohol, 
Yain Saraf Naki, the Tamsit Shal Yain Hanikra Sheri Vine, Vuhu Chazak Maod. He says he discovered that domestic whiskey in the U.S. Is, that's called blended whiskey and all other kinds of liquor are made through mixing alcohol, a pure spirits, meaning like either um, bourbon or uh, or uh, what do you or uh, what do you call just the whiskey made from from uh, what do you call whiskey made from wheat? American whiskey. American whiskey, right? Um, and then they also add some kind of wine derivative, which they call sherry, which is very strong. The yeshim osifin mat glycerin, vitam sichel perot shonim, and some also add glycerin, and also f- fruit flavors. Ha glycerin nikra softening and soothing agent. <laughs> Look at the Hebrew, isn't that great? He says the glycerin is called a softening and smoothing agent. Or soothing, sorry, soothing agent. Zo someres shepuulas ha glycerin hu lerachech hu lahachlik et hamashke vegam lahosif bo guf hanikra biloshonam badi. He says, what does the glycerin do? It softens the sharpness of the whiskey and it smooths, smooths it out and it also gives it uh, something that they say in English is called body. Mm-hmm. It gives it a little bit more viscosity, I suppose, I'm not sure. Hayaya nikra blended and flavoring agent kilavad masha hayayin merachech machalik ma'afsheret mizigat hamashke. And the wine that they add is a blending and flavoring agent. That's what they that's what they call it when they add it to the whiskey, because not only does it smooth out the flavor, makes the flavor more smooth, but it also uh, permits us to um, better pour the drink. Who gamosif botam vereach vegamashbiach es hamara. It also improves the flavor and the fragrance, and it also improves its appearance. Because dark wine, a little red wine added to the cask, will make it a darker kind of tan or brown. Harishus nesuna mitam hachok laarev yain o glycerin ad lishnayim vachatsi achuz mebli lahaskir al haseret shenimsa bahamashka taru vizu. The government permits in America to add up to two and a half percent of these additives to the whiskey without listing it on the label. That's what the word seret means over here. It means the label. He says, And kichok ha-medina ha-doresh lefaret al ha-seret kol ha-minim ha-muchlolem ba-hamashke nohig rak ba-ofen im kol ha-minim ha-nosafem magim l'shnaim v'chetzi achuz. He says, because the government only requires you to add additional ingredients other than whiskey when those additives add up to a total of 2.5% or more of the total volume of the contents. Zo someres echad me'arbon, which is only, which is, would be one in 40, which is more than one in 60, right? Aval im hayu, heim pachos ma'at mishir zeh, azai heim betelem lefi ha-hashkafa ha-chukit, ve'en shum tzorach lefarsem al aseret. But if it's any less than that, then you don't have, per, then you don't have to write it on the label. It's considered to be insignif- insignificant in the eyes of the government. It doesn't even have to be listed as an ingredient. Tam hayayin nirgash bahamashke, but... According to the experts, the flavor of the wine is still detectable in the beverage. And in this tshuva, this rabbi wrote that therefore it's problematic to have this blended whiskey without a heksher because you can taste the wine in it even if you're not a mumche, even if you're not a whiskey expert. Comes along... Rav Weiss in the second section and says as follows: Amnam kefisha sim harav ha'goin sham ba'atzmo zos toras asia samashkos l'minehem kefianog ba'artzo tabrit. But he says, but that's how they make blended whiskey in America. Aval im kol zeh matim la'asot la'asiyat hamashkaot hanal b'medina zu adain lo nitbayer bazet. But to find out how we create scotch, even blended scotch, that does not address how we make it here in the UK. So I had to go out and sort of die. So Diane Weiss says, now I need to go and find out how they make blended Scotch whiskey in our place. So I asked the Haredi guy to go and find out, a Frum guy, I asked him to find out 
and he deals in wine manufacturing. He's a wine merchant. I asked him, do me a favor, find out how they make scotch. And v'hu asa b'zeh she'ela b'derech hakira u'drisha b'iton miktsoa li'inyonim elu. So what he did is, is that he wrote a letter to, uh, to a magazine for people in the trade to see if anyone would respond. And and he so a guy a real a real expert responded to his query in English and I'm translating it from English to Hebrew and so we're going to translate it from Hebrew back to English okay. So the expert said, when we manufacture scotch, we store it for a minimum of seven years in sherry casks. And we specifically go out of our way to select casks that have been originally used for storing sherry. So he says the flavor and the fragrance of the whiskey changes based on how you, what kind of barrel you store it in. Shahayayin hadal v'hayavesh ose shinoi gadol berecho v'taim shal whiskey. Even the dried out small amount of wine will create a big difference in the nature and the flavor of the whiskey. Aval hayayin ha'adam v'hechazak po'el harbe beha whiskey. Sha'az totza'at hamashke keha v'noach na'im umivusam v'haviski yesh lo ta'a mehayayin. He says, but that's only when you put in cheap wine. He says, but if you put in really strong red wine, it does a significant amount of, uh, significant effect on the whiskey because the, the finished product is um, very pleasant and soft and very flavorful. And the whiskey has a detectable flavor of the wine. V'hutov l'mazig bo'acherim and it's also good to dilute other whiskies with this kind of whiskey that's been soaking in sherry casks. Already in the 1950s, you could not find used sherry casks that they used to import from Spain. It says those casks are no longer available. So what a lot of uh, Scottish manufacturers do is that they will first they will buy new casks, oak casks, they will soak them in sherry first, and then they'll add their scotch product. Okay? That's what this one mumcha did. There were many unanswered questions in that original letter. So this from wine merchant decided to uh, put forth a second letter to this mumche to find out, to verify a few additional facts. And he wrote back as follows. So what we first do is we smoke the barrels. And what's the purpose of smoking? You've, have you heard of this process? How many of you have been to Scotland to see? Did they talk to you about the smoking of the barrels? Mm -hmm. yeah. They smoke the barrels until all of the pores of the wood are opened up. And that apparently is supposed to be good for the aging of the scotch. And they char the barrel. They char the barrel, yeah. okay? The besocha eza kamo shel yayin. Then while the barrels are still hot and smoking, they add wine to the barrels. And And while the barrel is cooling off from the smoking or the charring process, the wine slowly absorbs into the walls of the, of the oak cask. Then, over the course of many years of storage in these oak casks, the sherry slowly seeps out into the scotch. 
the gorim l'rachech is chozko. And the benefit of the sherry is that it softens the sharpness of the scotch. Kach osim rov bali to asia. This is what most manufacturers do. Va'od ye shenostim kamus shal yayin keha ma'od l'takenet mar ito shal hayayin saraf. There are some manufacturers who will actually add actual wine to the finished scotch to be able to give it a darker color. Not for the flavor, but for color. Amnam kol tuvo shal haviski eno toli behayayin levad, elegam shar gormim yesh. But he says, I want to point out that the sherry in the cask is not the only contributor to the flavor of the of the uh, of the finished product. He says there are other contributors, and that's going to be important in halacha, as we'll see. Because it's zev zegarin. Kegon hachamitzus shebesocha eitz. One factor is the acidity of the wood. Okay. Shalken medaktekim likach davka chavuyos hanase meatzi haaloni. He says that's why they specifically use oak casks because the oak has a certain acidity level which also seeps into the scotch and helps to ferment it. The odioser, and there are other factors as well. Hazman, hagodol shemashim, for example, the time factor that is used to age the scotch, gorim lakama atarim shiyetsu v'atrim achrim boim b'mekomam, creates certain situations to leave the immature scotch and causes other qualities to be introduced to age scotch. All of these things contribute to the flavor and the fragrance that is in it. He says also, there are many other factors. For example, the altitude in which the, uh, the scotch is stored, the highlands or the lowlands, the flatlands, whatever they call it, like highland whiskey. Because why do they call it Highland Whiskey? Because the altitude, when you're storing scotch, plays a definitive factor in the flavor of the final product. Okay? He says, But one of the factors is clearly the quality of the wine or the sherry that's absorbed into the walls of the barrels. Ha'adom v'ha'keha motzi viski shemar iso keha v'chayotze bazeh. He says the, the, it'll affect the, the color and it'll affect other aspects. And he also emphasized this expert. He said that we're very careful to make sure that not too much sherry seeps into the scotch because if too much sherry seeps into the scotch, then it'll start to uh, cause a negative net flavor. He says, because the different batches of scotch may have different percentages of wine or different qualities of wine, so in order to equalize all of the batches when they bottle the scotch, they will add uh, maybe caramelized sugar is what I think he's referring to, which will create a more uniform color for all of the different batches of the scotch. Okay, so far we've learned a lot about manufacturing scotch. I think I'm missing something. All these things that we're learning until now, these deterrents, I mean, they fall into the category if it already happened to the Ebed, but I mean, this is not, this is the Chathila. That this is, you know, this so is remember, the, we saw the Taz. No, but in the Vatlin, it's a different problem, isn't it? Not according, if you hold that it's no St. Tom Lifgam, the Taz says that if it's, if it's only an Isser de Rabbanan, and it's for sure no St. Tom Lifgam, and it's a Dover so name, he says even Lechatchila you could be Mekel. No, I understand, but that's, that's, that's to that's to upset that's to that's to deflect the issue of no Saint Tom Lifgam. So if you hold that wine by definition is no Saint Tom Lifgam into whiskey, so then even it's mutter lechatchila. Now let me also point. That's so different than, 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 than the issue of of, of, of lechatchila. Because here even if you don't have a no Saint Tom Lifgam, 
You just have well, we, ha we haven't clarified that. We have to, first of all, see everything that we're seeing now in this tshuva is creating problems for us. Right. Because ever since we saw the Magen Avram, and now we're especially seeing that the wine, that the Scotch manufacturers, Dafka, go out of their way to introduce a wine flavor, it's clearly not no St. Tom Lefkam. So there would only be a heter at most bidyevid, but even bidyevid, it should be problematic because as long as the tam iser is detectable, as long as the flavor of the iser is there, there should be a problem even bidyevid. Right. Right? Okay. Because you want it to be there. Right? I mean, because all those things that we've been talking about till now fall, fall off if it's, all of it's done by accident, but the Evid. But right. in the Batlin by the way, yeah. by the way, regarding the Ein Mavatlin Isser Lechatchila, there's a whole tshuva from Rabbi Kiva Eger. If I'm an end user, I'm a consumer, right? I, right? I didn't manufacture the right. scotch. Some goy manufactured the scotch in Scotland. Right. And I just want to buy the, the bottle. So that there's no problem anymore of Ein Mavat Lenisr Lechatchila because he didn't do it specifically for me. He did it for the Velt. He did it for the Ganze Velt. And if he did it for the Ganze Velt, and I represent this, you know, this, this one Jewish guy in Brooklyn, then of course that's, that's not a problem. That's also, that's also after the fact that it's bottle. But anyway, that's, um, th that's only if you're going to argue that it's a problem of, of Bittel Isser. But here we're not, there's an argument to say that it's not even bottle. Because you see clearly from the manufacturing process that they go out of their way and invest more money in the manufacturing process to make sure that the flavor of the wine will seep out into the scotch. And it clearly, according to this mumcha, adds flavor to the scotch. It's not a mimid, but it's like it's behaving like a mamid. And therefore you can't be right. bottle it. It's either a mimid or it's something, I forget the term off, uh, I'm, some, I'm getting some kind of block, but it's, it's something that's tam taimo chazak. In other words, if there's something that is so strong that its flavor is detectable even when there's more than shishim against it, it's still going to be a problem. There are times when an iser is not bottled because it's got such a strong flavor. Even okay. The announcer can be infinitesimal. That's right. That's right. Okay, but let's see. I mean, look, we gotta. I, I'm not gonna let you go until we get you your heter, right? So, <laughs> so we gotta get you your heter before we get out of here. Or what we'll do is we we may just make this a two-parter and we'll keep you in suspense until next time. But anyway, let's just finish the tshuva from Dian Weiss. He says, the hayot Lanu mehanal in, in Gimel part Gimel. He says like this. He says what turns out from all of this is the afshi eshchilik b'metzias. The Hamashmos mimashin ispar laharav hagon hanal shiny mimasha omrim hanal the hanahu b'medina senu shein ma'arvin yain be'en mamish l'soch hayain saraf. He says. So let's be clear. First of all, there is a distinction in the method of manufacture between America and the UK. In in the US, when they manufacture blended whiskey, they actually add wine. Like in Southern Comfort, they'll actually add wine to the blended whiskey. Here, we're not actually adding real wine into the blended whiskey. We're only storing the scotch in sherry casks. Okay? He says, some will add real wine, oh, but only not for flavor, but only for appearance, which may be not problematic. He said, that's, you, that you could make that argument to draw a distinction between the two, the American whiskey versus the Scotch whiskey. However, of a Ladina e nafkamina. But what Diane Weiss says at the end of the day, there's really no difference. She'ein ladun bazel hahakel mitam hamavur biyoradeya, de sham hatam ishim sheishir bitul o dahabi no saint tam lifgam. He says, in, in Yoradeya, we had said that you can be mavatil wine, one in six, or, why? Because it's no St. Tom Lifgam, because it adds a negative flavor. Jesus, but here the whole objective is to mix deliberately the wine flavor into the scotch from the absorption that's in the barrel, Lo shiny metarubistam yen and mamish bain, then there's really no difference. It doesn't matter whether you're adding wine into the mixture or whether you're just letting it seep from the walls of the barrel 
into the scotch. He says, but this is where I think we have to deliberate. Is the wine flavor, specifically the wine flavor, detectable in the scotch? Or does the wine contribute toward the, towards the smoothing of the smoothening of the flavor of the scotch with other factors added? In other words, perhaps you could argue that if the wine is only one of the criteria that results in the smoothening of the scotch, but you can't, it's not that you detect the flavor of wine, but that you, get, you end up with a smoother uh, scotch, then maybe you could argue that since the wine is not the sole contributor to that smoothening, then maybe you could be more lenient. So he writes, But based on the expert that you consulted, or that we consulted, he says even a non-expert can tell that there's wine in here, in this scotch. I'm not sure if I know for this to be the case or not. I'm just telling you what he writes, okay? Mashma He says, based on that report, it would seem that the flavor of wine is detectable. Kama poskim shapaskul halacha distamienim after sharmashkim bottle bishisha. He says, even though there's many reasons to be lenient, because as we know from the tour and the Shulchan Aruch, that all you need is a one in six ratio to make wine that's usur bottle. Ayin bazeb yoradeo vitaz sham, with a mug in Avram, kasab dal kopanim, bieno shalanu vadai bottle bishisha. And the mug Avram says that for sure with our wine, one in six is for sure an acceptable ratio to make wine non-kosher wine bottle. V'ayin bin akudos ha-kesef of a prichada shiskim ladas ha-taz the bottle b'shisha v'ayin b'pizchei shuva sham t'sin l'sefer b'er yakov v'v'darchei tshuva v'yu v'kosef sherech b'zeh v'sim l'hakal kaponim b'ha b'ha prima godim v'v'shem sefer sharei deya hevi sham l'chalak b'ein kinyan me ha-akum l'chadchila da astrach shishim davka v'v'emes chiluka da kfar isa b'sefer orach mishor shal adarchei moshe sham so he says, basically, he goes through a lot of different svarim, but he says, like Laser's argument. He says, to purchase this, is going to be somewhat problematic if you don't have 60 times the scotch against the wine. He says, but there still is basis for those who wish to be mekel. He says, therefore, there's reason to be lenient if the scotch is going to cause the wine to become pagum, and you have a one in six ratio of wine to the scotch or to the whiskey, there's definitely reason to be lenient. And many times you'll even have 60 times the scotch against the, uh, against the absorbed wine. But despite all the things, and I think he's quoting Rav Moshe's uh, uh, Heter, but he says, but there are three reasons why I cannot accept these leniencies. The leniencies of arguing that the wine may be bottled in shisha, may even be bottled b'shishim in certain instances, but I can't accept these heterim. Echa de Latima Avida, that's the word I was looking for. Laser, if it's Latima Avida, then even more than, sh- even if it's uh, uh, in a ratio that's even more than 60 to 1, it's going to be problematic. Bez de Darkam Bekach. Secondly, it's Darkam Bekach, that this is what they normally do in order to develop this flavor. And Gimel de Ma'arvim Lechatchila. And three is that they're doing it Lechatchila to create this bittel. And then I'll, and I'll demonstrate to you through all of the poskim on the Shulchan Aruch why each one of these three reasons will create a problem for us to be lenient. What does he mean by dark on the This is their norm, which demonstrates that they want it to be this way. 
It's not just happenstance. If this is what they normally want to do, they've demonstrated that this is a desirable additive to the scotch. That's what I think it means. You should go, you can go, I mean, it's a much longer tshuva, but all we've done is we've brought in the uh, metzias. We've shown you that Dain Weiss ends up being machmir at the end of the day and disagrees with Rav Moshe and holds that you cannot be lenient either with American whiskey or with Scotch whiskey that has sherry additives or is stored in sherry casks. However, that's where we're going to have to hold it for tonight because we're out of time. Um, I will tell you this, those of you who have looked at that safer, did, did someone still have the safer? Those of you who have looked at the safer will note that there's a variety of shitas. And next week, Amir Tzah Hashem, we'll go through the tshuva that was issued by the COR for reasons to be lenient based on Rav Moshe, and then we'll discuss it a little bit further. So maybe pass back your handouts and we'll go over it again uh, next week.